So is the FTC regulation COPPA going to destroy YouTube? Let's talk about it now. Skip it up and that up. I apologize for the mess in front of you right now. I need to film B-roll for the laptop review, this laptop review, right after I do this video. So I wasn't going to take everything apart to put everything back up. But anyway, this is an important thing to talk about, and that is COPPA and what's going on and how it could affect YouTube. Now, if you remember back in September, YouTube was fined $170 million for violating COPPA by gathering personal information basically on YouTube's kids' videos so they could target ads at them. And according to the FTC's Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, you're not supposed to do that. And that's why they got the hefty $170 million fine. And due to that, YouTube said it was gonna make sweeping changes to children's content. So if you were successful on YouTube as a kids only content creator, this ain't looking good for you, especially. So I am reading this from Tube Filter. If you wanna check out the full article below, I'll have it listed in the description. COPPA is a 1998 US law that restricts operators of websites and online services from collecting the personal information of under 13 users without parental permission. Its original goal was to prevent kids from giving out their names, addresses, phone numbers, and other data online that could put them in danger from online predators. However, in 2013, the FTC amended COPPA, broadening the scope to one, expand the definition of operators to include creators who publish on ad assistant platforms like YouTube, and to two, expand the definition of personal information to include persistent identifiers, such as web cookies, which advertisers rely on to run ads matched to an appropriate audience, colloquially known as targeted ads or personalized ads. For six years, this amendment was never enforced against YouTube creators. However, as part of the aforementioned settlement with YouTube, the FTC has stated that they intend to start enforcing the regulations on creators individually. In practice, that means as of 2020, all content creators will have to designate whether or not each of their videos is directed to children, AKA kid directed or AKA child directed by checking a box during the upload process. Checking that box will prevent the video from running personalized ads. And if you're thinking it's just going to be newly uploaded videos, you'll be sorely mistaken. You will have to go through, if you're a creator like me, your entire back catalog and see if the videos are intended for children. I, I, I can safely say that none of mine are, so I'm not too worried about it, but there are some people out there who do make kid-friendly content and they make a lot of it and this is a big problem for them. Now you're probably thinking, oh Rich, yeah, I'll just not check the box and you know, if I upload content, I'll get the personalized ads even if it is a kid-friendly video. What's the big deal? Here's where the problem with that is too. If the FTC finds you in violation of this and you're uploading what they think is kid-friendly content and you're not saying it's kid-friendly content to get the personalized ads on there to make more money, they could fine you $42,000 per video, per video, not like as a lump sum and that's your fine. If, so if they, if the FTC thinks you, you have kid friendly content, and you're not saying it's for kids or intended for kids and, and they think it is, you could go bankrupt just like that. Now, here's the reason why I'm personally not losing sleep, but I could see why other people are is here's the factors. This is on tube filter as well. These are some of the factors. Okay. Um, if you're in these, then you'd be considered a kid-friendly channel and you'd be in a world of trouble. I don't really think I fit any of these. Number one, the subject matter of the site or service. I don't think anyone looks at my channel and thinks it's for kids. Yes, I talk about tech and gaming, but my biggest demographic is 25 to 34. It's like single percentage with people younger than that. Uh, the video's visual content. Don't think anyone comes to my YouTube channel thinking it's for kids. The videos of animated characters or child-oriented activities and incentives. Maybe my intro, where intro guy gets blown up, but I don't really think, especially with the animation of what goes on, that would fall into that either. Music or other audio content in the video. Nope. Age of models featured in the video. I don't think me and my chap lips are child-friendly. Presence of child celebrities or celebrities who appeal to children in the video. Maybe when I talk about ninja, that's like the best I could think of. I don't know. Language or other characteristics of the website or online service. I don't fit into that either. And whether advertising, promoting, or appearing on the website or online service is directed at children. It's not. And my demographics prove that. I'm not just comparing this to me. I'm just saying 
I see a lot of people who make content similar to mine right now, like freaking out. Like I know the quarterings beard is on fire right now and, and, and he thinks the sky is falling. And this is still bad. I think the worst thing about this, I'm not worried about th this change happening possibly in January 2020 in and of itself, but YouTube's doing the machine learning thing again. And there, oh no, that's where I see a problem. Now, if you don't get the personalized ads, your revenue could go down 60 to 90% per video. That's insane. Okay. Again, I'm not personal. I, I will have, I have no fear about not checking the box where it says this video is meant for kids because I know my content isn't meant for kids. But the machine learning part bothers me because here we go again. We know how machine learning started with Adpocalypse. How did that go at the time? Went pretty bad. That was part of the reason I had a Patreon at the time to help me pay rent for the office because. Every, it, it wasn't as bad for me as it was for political channels. I'll be honest with you. I just said that in the live stream I did previous to this video. But it was bad enough where I was like, I got to make sure the bills get paid in my office. So that's why I had the Patreon. And when I left the office, that's why I got rid of the Patreon before I even officially left the office, to be honest with you. But anyway, my point being is that the machine learning part of this bothers me because you know the machine learning at the beginning of this. If there's... They're taking comments to the FTC, and I'm going to have links to a change.org petition where you could send comments to the FTC that's built into the tube filter. Um, I'm going to have a whole bunch of links for you to, to petition this because whether it's for children content creators who create content for children or anyone on YouTube, or even if you're a viewer on YouTube, you want COPPA in its current form to be amended because it's still going to be detrimental to everybody. Here's the thing that bothers me about the FTC and COPPA and the whole thing is that one, Federal Trade Commission, let the parents be parents. If the parents don't care that the kids are watching YouTube, that's on them. If they don't care that they're seeing these ads, that's on them. Believe me, the parents that you're concerned about are my age. And if and most of them just don't give a crap and let them go on YouTube and watch whatever the hell they want to. Not saying that's good parenting, I'm just keeping it real with you. You don't need to step in and be parents for them. The parents don't give a crap. And if they do give a crap m enough, guess what? There's an app called YouTube Kids. There's an app called YouTube Kids, which puts kids in that sandbox or walled garden, which will keep them away from those ads and, and, and the questionable content. And the other thing that bothers me too, more so because I don't think I'm going to get extremely directly affected by this at all, to be honest with you is as a parent, my kids watch YouTube all the time. And what do you think creators like Blippi, they need to make money to continue to make the plethora of content they have. They, in most of, let's keep it real. Look, there's a, I get sponsorships and look, if you want to become a member, I finally set up my memberships. There's a link below in the description. I'm going to start live streaming on this channel. I give in, I know you want me to, there'll be cucumber emojis and Richard Simmons emojis and it'll be a good time. Yes, I'm shilling for that. I'll be the first to admit it. But the main source of income for virtually everyone on this website, and don't tell me it's any other way. I, I know, Rich, I have an article to show. A big chunk anyway, a big portion of revenue comes from the ad revenue from the machine generated ads that start at the beginning of the videos and their mid-roll ads and end ads. It is. Whether you're creating content for children, whether you're me, whether you're someone else, we all get the sponsorships, we all get other streams of revenue, but the biggest one for many people that I know is still YouTube ad revenue, okay? And even if it isn't, ads need to be placed on YouTube videos because that's what makes them get pushed to the forefront. The algorithm, if your video is demonetized or limited monetization, or if it, if, if Cop, Copa or Kappa goes through the way it is right now, it's not going to get pushed to the forefront. You won't get as many subscribers, which means there may not be as many people to sign up as members, which means that the video, videos won't get as many views, which means that third party sponsors who may come to you, and that's where you get the sponsorships from, will be like, oh, he's not getting that many views on it. He or she's not getting that many views on their video. We're not going to sign them up for a sponsorship. So it ends up being a snowball anyway. So it still hurts in the end. So look in the description below. I have, you could contact the FTC. Even if you're not a content creator, this will affect you, especially if you're a parent with little kids. I have a change.org petition you could sign. I have many other things you can do. Check out the links in the description below. It'll describe everything. And I feel like every other week, there's another disaster with YouTube. And you know why it is? Because it's still a relatively new form of media and people don't know how to handle it.
And just like J House Law said, he went to the FTC, they don't even really understand how it works. And when they make these laws, they prove that. They just kind of throw things out there and see what sticks. But they're listening to comments right now. So comment and let them know how you feel. Again, links below in the description. Richard Review Tech USA signing out. Have a good one. Mm -hmm.